statistics of what was given and you know the tragedy over the trenches in, in France and Belgium um, and it's you know what we fail to understand or, or well I fail to understand is that it was normal people like we are today there was normal people from Bilston, Bradley, Darliston, Moxley, Tipton, Wolverhampton and all across the country that served and where some of it was fighting for their survival, the tragedy of the song was that the bombardment was starting a week before, so they bombarded solid for a week, and it was horrendous, and the Germans on the other side have obviously worked out what was taking place, and they then all took cover and they was waiting and waiting and waiting. And our lads from here was waiting to go over the top on the first of the morning. And it was absolute carnage and it was a past war of cavalry charges that was the way that the troops was organised, but it was an industrialised war that took place. And I would like to talk about the industrial side of it from these parts. We had lots of factories and companies that was producing primarily for the war effort. Sankey's down the road was the first producers of the Brody helmet, you know, the Tommy helmet. They produced it on mass lines at Sankey's and they produced all the shells. Then we got the Thompsons who made all the chassis for the lorries and the cars. Villiers, the Villiers car company adapted cars to be used at the front and all this is from Wolverhampton and all this is from Bilston specific. And then early in 2016, there was a Zeppelin raid on, on the black country and people was killed all across the black country because the, the Zeppelin commanders thought that they was in Liverpool because of all of our canal infrastructure. And people was, and it was a mistake, they got blown off course. So that started early in January and people lost their lives across the back. And they, they, Warsaw, the mayor was killed in a tram when it was bombed. There was lots of civilians, and I think that time brought the, the war right onto the doorstep, and now it affected everybody. Now, the conditions in the factories were that good, so I wonder how many people around the black country areas died, or got maimed, or got injured in the production for the war effort. Everything was geared up for the war effort. And then, because the men was away at war, women and children took took place into the, the industrial fight. And these, these are people that are from here and from the surrounding black country. And it's just a stark thought that we, you know, we need to give a, th a few minutes thought to of what, we, what would we have done, you know, which is really, really startling. But the, the battle itself raged on and raged on. A million people that were said earlier have, have given their lives up. And this today is just to, to you know, say thanks for, for doing all that. But to just bear thought and to reflect back on what would have we would have been like that, and then you know we're going to talk earlier or uh, later on about the the medical side of it. What was the conditions in the trenches? The, the in 2000, in 1916, gas was first used. So it's an absolute horrendous period that we got through, and there was there's no like NHS then. We need to reflect on that, and it was people had to pay if they got injured or, you know, got brought back. In the factories that had to pay or that I wouldn't work, would they have got any com any any form of social security? Because that may come in later on. Mm -hmm. And it's just to give that thought to it. You know, we had like Villiers Company, we had lots of people that was writing back and telling us what was happening. Mm -hmm. And this is a good opportunity. If there's any local stories, we can get them put down and we can bring that back. We're in the Bilson, remembered, we we're looking to find as many names as we can to go on our rolls to recognise what they had given. In fact, when we've been doing the stuff of Bilson remembered, we don't realise that the memorial itself did come into effect until 1922. And it was gathered by people contributing, much as we're asking to do the same today. So it's, it's a really interesting and fascinating period. Uh, there's some stuff that I've been doing at Wolverhampton University because I'm studying there, is that the concept of the First World War, just really, we think of, of being just on, in France and Belgium and Germany, and, but it was in Italy. It was also in 
East Africa. It was also in Turkey. And some of the people who probably joined the regiments from the Staffords and the South Staffords and the North Staffords would have fought on the Somme, but many were scattered across the world into East Africa, into South Africa, uh, like we've said, uh, into not some of it into North Africa, and then even as far as South Africa, uh, South America, rather, because what was they fed in the trenches? Bully beef. Where did it come from? The Fraubenters Companies, Chile and Argentina. So it was truly the first world war, which meaning the world war. And countries that later, uh, in the Second World War, was uh, in the Axis forces. Japan was uh, 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 the Axis forces in the Second World War, but in the First World War, there was an ally of Britain, much the same as Brazil. But when, because it was those times where we think of all this modern technology that we've got today, the most modern technology that they got was telegraph, <coughs> and they failed to use that in the Battle of Jutland. They relied on flags. So it's just putting it into that context. Um, also, what we had here, which was startling that I found out, was that there was a German community, because there was German people who'd come to this to work, uh, but they were then persecuted in the streets, much done in, in lower pen and places like that. So it, as it, things... You know, recently, we've just come through a referendum, and I don't want to talk about that. But there's still these things are still relevant to today, and yeah. that, and we must reflect back to say, you know, that that still took place then. So it's it's a, a really interesting period of time, uh, both economically, socially, and for the, for our town specifically, um, there was when the casualties and the deaths got reported back, there was street shrines set up. But street shrines was upon the corner. We used to see them on the old pubs on the corner of pubs. Who had fallen, when and where? The, those were the people who could afford to have the names carved or uh, Freemason down. So how many we've, have we lost? It, it is a really, really interesting period. And it's just a, a fitting period that we should recognise that the war was raging over in the trenches. But we were also raging in the factories where there's producing the munitions. Some of the some of the patents that have been made at, at Sankey's was about submarines, and they were making submarine parts to combat the German submarines. So it, was, it is a really, really interesting and fitting period of time. And um, I think what we should do is we should commemorate as much as we can, but learn lessons as we move forward so we can stop this. You know, it might be an aspiration of mine, but we should be thinking before we rush to these sort of actions but I mean if we'll have a chance later whether if you ask some few questions and answers and we can share possibly some of our stories of our great grandfathers and grandfathers and you know they should be captured I do think but um, I think that's enough from me anybody's got any questions they want to ask me specific Doug, you wanna? Yeah, thanks. Thanks Doug, so Doug James from Mo is a councillor from Moxley that's why we've asked yeah. 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 Uh, 